What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to combine the extension slicer with solid tools to create a new kind of shape in SketchUp. And before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to uh, basically give a start to finish training for SketchUp. So everything from learning the basic tools all the way to getting into some higher level modeling things like modeling for interior design and layout and getting into a little bit of uh, photorealistic rendering. So if that's something you're looking for, you want to get some more start to finish training in SketchUp, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this video is basically, I, I just wanted to kind of play around with using solid tools along a slicer in order to create kind of a sliced wall. And I happened to find an image on Pinterest that looks like this, that I wanted to create kind of a similar condition. So it's basically a rippling wall condition. And I kind of thought that the these tools would be good to create something like that. Specifically because Slicer requires all of your objects to be solids, and so Solid Tools is a great fit for this. And so I'll link to a couple tutorials on how to use Slicer and also how to use uh, Solid Tools down below. But let's go ahead and just start off and let's create our wall. So I'm going to activate the Rectangle tool by tapping the R key, and I'm just going to set my base point. And then I'm going to set my wall, we'll go ahead and call it, for now we'll call it 6 inches thick by 20 foot long. So I typed in six inches comma 20 feet. And then we'll go ahead and we'll say that this wall is 10 feet high. So I'm gonna push pull this up 10 feet, just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete out my default model. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna create a group. So that way, all of this geometry is in a group and you can see how this is in here as a solid. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple circles on this wall. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to draw a 12 inch circle. And then I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click find center. And that just gives me a center point right here that I can use to draw more circles. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw a two foot wall, a three foot or a two foot circle, a three foot circle, and that's basically what the radius of these is, and then a four foot circle. So I've got my kind of, uh, I've got my kind of guide paths in here for how I'm going to create this geometry that we're going to use to make our rippling wall. And so one other thing you may want to do is you may want to come in here and just start thinking about how thick you want this to be. So to do that, I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to draw a circle real quick. And so in this case, I'm going to draw this circle and what I did is I activated the circle tool by tapping the C key, then I tap the up key to lock it to the blue axis. And then what I can do is I can come in here and I can draw my circle and I can just kind of think about how big I want this, uh, this to stick out from this face. So you can see how I can just kind of come in here and just kind of eyeball it and see how far out I want that to be. And if I wanted to, I could draw a circle and then use the move tool in copy mode. So you could just double click to select this, tap the M key, and then tap the control key to activate copy mode. And I could just click on this point and I could move it over here. And I could just kind of look and see if I thought these arcs were gonna be the right size. In this case, I feel like they are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make two more copies of these arcs. So that you can see I have four copies of these arcs along this uh, along this edge here. The other thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to come in here and I'm gonna delete out all the faces that got created in here because otherwise you're gonna get some merging geometry that you don't necessarily want. And so what I can do is I can either hide my wall or I really don't need to if I don't want to. Um, but if you hide your wall, you can see how you have a series of four circles right here. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this line to select it as a path. You're gonna activate the follow me tool and you're just gonna click on this circle. And you're gonna do that for each one of these. So I'm just selecting the path, activating the follow me tool, and then clicking on the circle. So you can see how all of those are now in there as actual 3D shapes. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna triple click on these and you're just gonna right click and you're gonna make each one of them a group. 
And one thing to note when you do this is if you click on these, SketchUp sees all of these as solid groups. Meaning, if you basically the best way to describe solids is if you were to take your 3D shape and to fill it up with water, there wouldn't be any leaks. So it's completely enclosed. And so you can see how this will tell you that this is a solid group and it'll also give you a volume if these are in here as solids. And that's a very important if you're gonna use the extension slicer because it only works on solid models. And so now, what we're gonna do is if we wanted to, we could probably come in here and do this the long way of, whoops, I'm gonna unhide my wall here. We could probably do this the long way of coming in here and using slicer on each one of these. But in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna combine all of this into a single object. And so to do that, we're gonna use solid tools. And you could also use an extension like bool tools if you don't have the pro version. You can download bool tools, which basically has the same functionality, but you don't have to buy the pro version in order for it to work, you can just buy that extension. So either way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the merge function or the outer shell function in order to do this. But the first thing we wanna do before we work with solids at all is we want to save our model. So I'm gonna do a file, save as, and save my model. And so once you've saved your model, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start merging these together. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and turn on X-ray mode in my views just so you can see what I'm doing. And the other thing you may wanna do is you may wanna come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and hide all of these for just a second, but you may wanna take all of this and either delete it or just move it out of the way. I'm gonna move it out of the way just in case I need it. And for now, I'm actually gonna leave that center point right here, but I'm just gonna move the rest of this off to the side. And then I'm gonna unhide my stuff again. So now this path isn't actually in here as a part of this. It's not gonna be getting in the way of anything. And so what we're gonna do is if you look inside the wall right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this geometry so it's not in the way. If you look inside the wall right now, you can see how basically these just kind of exist in the same space as the wall. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna merge them into a single object. And so to merge them into a single object, you're gonna go into solid tools and you're gonna click the option for outer shell or in bool tools, I believe it's the union tool. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on outer shell and it's gonna ask you to select your first solid. Well, in this case, that's gonna be our outer loop. And then the second solid is gonna be our wall. And so now if you were to rotate in here, you can see how this combined those two solids and it deleted out the extra geometry. So now if I click on this outer wall, you can see how it actually has a volume associated with it and it's still in here as a solid, meaning, meaning we can use the extension slicer in order to slice it up. And so all you're gonna do is you're just gonna do the same thing for the other three circles in here. And you can actually just come through and click on each one of them. And so you can see since x-ray mode is on, you can see how these all just merge into your wall now. And so it has a volume and it's a solid. And so now if I was to turn this off, you can see how I have these loops on the face of my wall. And so now we can come in here and we can use slicer. And before we use slicer, we wanna make sure we save our model because this creates a lot of extra geometry and you're never 100% sure what that's gonna look like. So in this case, we're gonna go in and we're gonna activate the slicing tool within Slicer. And so what we wanna do is we wanna slice this on the up and down axis. And so we're gonna select the Z axis. The Z axis is the blue axis, the straight up and down. And there's several different options in here. One thing I would recommend, especially if you have a slower computer, is if you're not planning on CNCing the shape or anything like that, you may wanna turn off the option for flatten because if you tell this to flatten this, then it's gonna take all of your shapes and it's gonna lay them out behind this on the ground so you can see each shape because this extension works really well for creating things like CNC and other stuff like that, but we don't need that in this case. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our spacing. I'm gonna start off, my spacing between each slice is gonna be two inches. And then the thickness of each slice is gonna be one. So you can play around with those to adjust the space between your different slices. And then I don't really care about the rest of these right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna run slicer along your wall. And so you can see how this generates basically that rippling wall that we were talking about. And a couple things you could do if you wanted to, you could come in here if I was to undo this 
you could adjust your spacing and your thickness. So let's say I wanted this to have some thicker pieces in it and also some bigger spacing. I could turn this to like four and two. And you can see how now these are thicker. So now if you were to come in here and measure, this has a thickness of two and between each slice it has a thickness of four. So by adjusting those, so if I was to do like one and one half, then you'd have a lot narrower slices and you'd have a lot more of them. So you can just kind of undo and redo, kind of playing around with this, seeing what you like in this case. So in this case, those are a little too close together for me. So I'm just gonna go back to where I had it originally, which is two inches and one inch. And I'm gonna hit okay. And so you can see how now we have our rippling wall created in here in SketchUp. And the, the next step is kind of optional. You can do it if you want to, but you can see how this all comes in here as this blue color. So that's just kind of the default for this indicating what axis these were cut along. You can go in and you can just color over it with something like the default model. This group basically has a color applied to it. So if I was to undo this and click on this group, you can see how up here, this is the color associated with that. So if I was to go inside, each one of these objects doesn't have that associated with it. So that means you can come in here and you can adjust your materials with the material tool really easily. And one thing you might note about this is when it brings these in, these are really rough curves. So they've got a whole bunch of extra geometry in here that you may not want. And so what you can do is you can come in here and you have to go inside this group. So if you double click inside this group and you do a control A, to select all of them, you can actually go into the soften edges option in your tray and you can check the box for soften coplanar and you can also kind of play around with this slider. And you can see how when I move this slider, what happens is some of that extra geometry starts getting hidden. So it's still in there, it's just kind of hidden geometry. So you can see how as you move that slider, that geometry starts getting hidden, making this look a lot smoother. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. It's just kind of a fun workflow, but you could use this to apply to a lot of different parametric type shapes. So do you have any ideas for what you could do with this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.